The director of the CDC, Dr. Rochelle Walensky, joins us now for an exclusive interview with ABC News Live, and it's a, a big moment. Dr. Walensky, I guess you just got your booster COVID shot. How, how do you feel? How'd it go? I feel great. I'm delighted to have gotten my my fall updated vaccine, my bivalent vaccine, so I can be as protected as possible over the coming months. And, and doctor, let's talk about where we are right now. Uh, more than two years, two and a half years now into the pandemic. Many of us are fully vaccinated. I still have to get that booster you got just now. Uh, a, a lot of people have gotten sick, obviously. So there's a immunity with that as well. Uh, how, how do you look at this new booster in the fight against the pandemic? How confident are, are, how confident are you that it'll be better than the previous vaccines? How do you read that? Yeah, so I think, first of all, let me just say, I am here getting my updated fall vaccine because I think it's critically important to do. As you know, we are in a very different place than we were last year or even two years ago um, at this time. There's a lot of immunity out there because people have been vaccinated and have been previously infected. But all the data from this new bivalent vaccine have demonstrated that it will protect you against, more likely protect you against the strains that we have circulating right now, those Omicron BA5 strains, as well as keep you well protected because we've seen that some of that protection can wane over time. So we are really encouraging everybody to roll up their sleeves and get this updated bivalent vaccine. And, and Dr. Walensky, what was your reaction when you heard President Biden say the pandemic is over? And uh, what do you think of that? You know, here's what I can tell you. We're, we're in a different place. Schools are open and businesses are open. We have a lot of population immunity out there right now. We have a lot of protection from vaccination already. Um, deaths are still at 350 a day, but they are way lower than they were um, a year ago, two years ago at this time. So we are continuing to do everything we can, promoting these updated booster shots so that people can get the protection that they need, but recognizing that we are in a much better place than we were a year ago at this time. But the pandemic is not over from your perspective? Well, we continue to encourage people to do all the things that they can do to protect themselves. We have the tools right now to protect yourself. You can get your primary series if you haven't yet gotten it. You can get your updated fall bivalent vaccine. And then should you actually get infection, we have tools like Paxlovid um, so that you can protect yourself against severe disease, hospitalization and death. So I think as we look at the big picture, things are very different. Our hospitals are not overwhelmed. People are back to work. Schools are open again. I think those are really critically important metrics. All right, I'll, I'll take that as a as a no, uh, that, that it's not entirely over. But let, let's look forward. This fall now, it's, it's flu season. The COVID uh, waves have grown, obviously, in the winter and fall when people get closer together. Wastewater surveillance data, I guess, has shown some increases in COVID already. Where do you think we're headed with this virus in the coming months? You know, what we can say is that respiratory viruses, be they COVID or influenza, tend to thrive in our winter months where people are gathered inside closer together, the air is dry, and that's when respiratory viruses tend to have their biggest impact. And so what we're uh, promoting right now, telling people right now, is to do all you can to protect yourself against what might come, whether it be a new um, uh, influenza, whether it be a, a, a surge of COVID cases, what you can do right now to protect yourself so you can prevent getting sick in the future. You know, Dr. Walensky, uh, you've lived it, we all have. This pandemic became you know, a cultural and political divide in this country, and uh, there's a lot of responsibility, blame to go around for that. I'd like to get your take on, on the scathing internal CDC report that you commissioned about the agency's initial responses to the pandemic, that report finding the CDC's public guidance when it came to things like wearing masks, social distancing, it was confusing, it was sometimes overwhelming. So yeah, yeah, I don't want to assign blame, but where do you look at responsibility for the way the messaging came out and the response of the American people? And what have you learned as a public health leader about that? 
Yeah, I think, thank you for that. I think this is critically important. Um, never in CDC's 76 year history have we had to tackle the challenge of a pandemic that impacted everyone of every single American and every person around the world. And so why I commissioned this review is to understand where we could have done better. What have we learned and what do we need to do and prepare ourselves for, for any future challenges? And that was really the purpose of the review. We have a lot of success stories we could tell as well. 600 million vaccines into arms in just a year and a half. But the purpose of this review was really to say, where could we have done better? What we've noticed and recognized with um, and acknowledged through this review is that CDC is now no longer simply talking to public health professionals, to medical professionals and scientists. We're talking to the American people. Now America is coming to our website. They're coming to see what our review and guidance has said. That was previously not happening. And so now now, um, as part of this review, we have recognized we need to provide um, data to the American people. It needs to be accessible, it needs to be understandable, and it needs to be in real time and quickly so that people can understand how the, the science should impact their decisions. Because obviously, doctor, thank you for that, you, you need buy-in from as many uh, people in the United States as possible, and yet you travel around the United States and it's still, you know, the two countries in so many ways also when it comes to COVID, how people react in Boston, how people protect themselves in some cities, very different than in other places. How, have, you, have you given up on bridging that divide? I mean, is, is there anything that the CDC or the government can do uh, to cure what has become a, a public health problem, that, that COVID is a disease of certain parts of the country, certain, peop certain political beliefs? Uh, and and how, do you, how do you operate on that? So, so uh, COVID doesn't care, the virus doesn't care how you voted. Um, and my job is to make sure that people protect themselves because I care about keeping America healthy, regardless of how they vote. So in my mind, I don't give up. My job is to give people the information that they need to have in order to make the safest, smartest um, decisions for their own personal health. Um, and I will continue to do that, um, whatever position I hold. All right, let's talk about monkeypox, which is this uh, new virus. Now that school is in session, are you seeing uh, th that virus spread in, in colleges or, or classrooms or even, or even daycares? What's the status of that outbreak? Yeah, so um, certainly numbers um, are continue to increase on a daily basis, but that rate of rise is much slower than we've seen before. We have seen cases on um, individual cases on, on college campuses, but here's the important thing to recognize. We have recognized through this outbreak that the transmission of monkeypox is through close skin-to-skin -skin contact, most often sexual skin-to-skin -skin contact. So while we have seen cases on college campuses, we have not seen um, transmission mission from those cases in casual settings. So really important to understand how that virus is transmitted very differently from COVID-19. Hmm. And, and finally, just to return, you got your booster today. It's expected new boosters are going to be made available for kids as young as five years old uh, very soon. What, what do you say to parents who say, you know, is it really necessary for my young one uh, to get a booster? Uh, because those, one of the silver lines of the pandemic is severe illness is, is not that common among the youngest one. Did, did you get your kids boosted? I absolutely did. <laughs> um, I have gotten my kids boosted. I've encouraged them to go ahead and get the bivalent vaccine. In fact, one has already done so and, and the others are, are headed to do so. Um, here's what I will tell you. Fortunately, children have fared better in this pandemic than our elderly. That's a good thing. But when we look at the leading causes of hospitalization, leading causes of death among our kids under the age of 18, COVID over the last two years has been one of the top five. It's been the highest infection cause of hospitalization. And so really important, we know that vac vaccine protection can wane over time. We've seen in laboratory studies that the bivalent vaccine has the potential to offer better protection for the variants that are circulating right now. So um, we will wait to see what the FDA says about an updated vaccine for our booster vaccine for our five to 11 year olds and, and we'll make some decisions soon thereafter. All right. Well. Dr. Shell Walensky, CDC Director, good luck in your work on these continuing challenges, and thanks very much for your time. Thanks for having me.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.